Father, and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for today's message is from our first lesson from Deuteronomy, the 8th chapter. The Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks, of water, of fountains and springs, flowing out in the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper. And you shall eat and be full, and you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. This is our text. So how does this Thanksgiving thing work anyway? How are we supposed to give thanks to fulfill this holiday of Thanksgiving that our nation has given to us? You know this isn't a religious holiday. This is an American holiday. So how is it that this Thanksgiving thing works? If you believe the leaders of our country, we are to give thanks for the Native Americans for teaching the pilgrims how to plant crops. If you listen to a particular conservative radio host, it's exactly the opposite, that we are to give thanks for the rampant capitalism the Puritans discovered when this whole idea of community living just didn't work. What about God? It's not often I get to disagree with both Rush Limbaugh and Barack Obama in the same sermon, but there I just did it. <laughs> so how are we to give thanks this holiday season if it is not to the Lord God Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth? Give thanks, we hear all the time. Thank God is what our heart should tell us. So how does this th Thanksgiving thing work? It works this way. God gives, we respond. That's how confession absolution works. That's how sacraments and our response works in worship. It's how thanksgiving works. It's how God works. First, he gives, and then we respond. He gives us forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord, for which it is our duty to thank and serve, to praise and obey him. He gives us every good gift of this world for which it is our duty to thank and praise, to serve and obey Him. He gives us a great land in which to live, in which we shall want nothing, for which it is our duty to thank and praise, to serve and obey Him. But what land are we ultimately talking about? These United States are a great land. Everything mentioned in this promised land thing was found in these United States of America. Took them a while to get to the uh, west coast to find the olive orchards, but yeah, they're there. But what land do we ultimately have to thank God for? Our citizenship in heaven above, where every gift is ultimately fulfilled. Where every home is ultimately a permanent home and which we ourselves will ultimately give praise, honor, and thanks to God in person. Until then, every little gift we have in these United States of America is but a tiny little foretaste of that feast to come. And for that foretaste, we certainly also want to give thanks. That first year the pilgrims were here, the rations were so meager that the ration of corn per person per meal was five kernels of corn. And for that meager portion of five kernels of corn, they gave thanks. The next year, things were a lot better. But it hasn't always been an uphill climb, has it? I mean, if we look at where things are today and everything we have in our homes compared to back then, we can think that, yeah, there's been a gradual progression all the way up of all the good things that God has continued to pour into our nation. But we know that isn't so, is it? I have heard from several of you and from several of your parents what it was like to live through the Great Depression. And that five kernels of corn ration was getting to be 
pretty close to the truth again, wasn't it? And so we thank God for what we have today, following the example of St. Paul. He knew what it was to live in times of plenty, and he knew what it was like to live in times of want. And he had learned the secret of being content in whatever the circumstances. If we are not content with where we are today, even though the economy's sputtering along and it's not as good as it could be, we're doing pretty good. And if we're not content with where we are, we're certainly not going to be content if things really do go south. On the flip side, you know in your heart of heart that the opposite is true too. That if you're the one who has just lost his or her job today, and if you're the one who doesn't know where your next paycheck is coming from, and you're the one who's wondering, can I really afford to put turkey on the table tomorrow? You know in your heart of hearts that if you are not content in that lowly estate, then you shall not be content whatever the Lord fills your life with in the future. And so we follow that example of St. Uh, Paul in today's epistle lesson, to be content whatever the circumstances, because we recognize that God will continue to pour into our lives all of these good gifts, and at the response of his prior giving to us, we respond with great praise and thanksgiving. For the Jewish people, this was a radical idea. That in Deuteronomy, this was a radical idea that God would first give them this wonderful land and then they would praise him. Because the indigenous peoples that the Israelites faced had it completely backwards. Remember Elijah and Mount Carmel? I think somebody taught you about that recently. Elijah on Mount Carmel, he is talking to a whole bunch of guys who thought they had to get God's attention first. The Canaanite religions were out there telling us, telling the Israelites that, hey, you've got to really please God. You've got to appease him with all these fertility rites. And if you do that for God first, if you give to God your sacrifices and praise, then he will respond to you. God told the Israelites through Moses... Guys, they got it backwards. And to show you that on a grand scale, here we go. I'm going to give you this good land in which you're going to find all this good stuff. And then, then, God tells him, then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land he has given to you. There's a new king in town. There's a new priest in town. There's a new prophet in town. Our Lord Jesus Christ has come to fulfill all that even Moses in that land of the Holy Land came to tell those people about. And he fulfills it right there in today's Gospel lesson. There's another group of people out in their wilderness, out in the leper colony from which there would be no escape. And to their cries of, Lord, have mercy, God gives. God gives to them. Some of them continue on to Lord knows where, maybe some to the priest, maybe to their homes. But one returned to the new priest in town. The one who will stand before God and sacrifice for the people that they might live long in the land that our Lord God gave to them. And that Samaritan came and fell on his face and praised Jesus. Not that he might get something in the future, right? He'd already gotten it. He'd already gotten the gift. And God wasn't going to take it away from him. Those other nine, you think, as they went along their way, they go, Oop, whoops, <laughs> leprosy's back. No, God gives. God gives and gives and gives and gives and gives. And we, in response, we praise, we thank, we serve, we obey. We look at what God has given us in our lives and we have a lot to be thankful for. We look at our church and we thank God for the wonderful group of people that he has gathered together in this place. And so we as citizens of Zion are thankful. We look at our city of Omaha and look at the growth that's still going on around us and recognizing that isn't happening all over the country. And so as citizens of Omaha, we have reason to give thanks to the Lord. 
Same thing for the state of Nebraska. Pretty decent harbor this year. We give thanks to the Lord. Texas A&M gives thanks. <laughs> for the 13th man on the field, the one wearing black and white, but that's a completely different story. But in every situation we're at, we learn to be content knowing that everything that's in our lives at any given moment, God has first given to us. And in response, our hearts overflow <coughs> with praise and with thanksgiving and a desire to serve other people as God has first served us. As we go forth from this night, let us not just be thankful and let it evaporate into thin air, but let us thank and pray, serve and obey our Lord by reflecting his love to all that he has placed in our lives. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. As the ushers gather our offering, our choir will join in singing simple thanks. <laughs>